Hi, I'm Paul Morin with the Energy Conservatory, and welcome to our webinar titled Advanced Duct Leakage Testing. And we'll cover a few housekeeping items first. If you're having trouble with the audio, um, there is a meeting pull down menu, and uh, choose the audio setup wizard and follow through those instructions to, uh, to get your audio set up. Um, type in questions as you think of them. Um, we will be answering questions uh, during the webinar, and uh, so you'll see some of those responses. And then at the end, we'll, we'll also go over, um, we'll review some of the questions and, and take more questions at the end. Um, because this is a recorded webinar and we're, we're streaming it, it, it will stream at different rates to different people. So, so we're gonna wait a few minutes at the end um, for hopefully everybody to catch up um, before we go live with additional questions. So, so you may see that that there's a lag at the end or or maybe even if, if yours is streaming real slow, you may see some of the end of it, um, the very end of it might be cut off before, when we come live, but that's because of different rates of uh, streaming the video. Um, we will put a link to the webinar on our website so you can uh, view parts of it again, or um, um, you know, tell your uh, your colleagues or other people you know about the webinar, and, and they'll be able to uh, to view it at any time. And then you can go over parts of it that that weren't clear. And certainly, feel free to to email or call us with uh, questions that might come up. And we're always looking for ideas for future webinars, what kinds of things uh, um, you'd like to see in the future. So if you could give us some uh, feedback on that, either type it in the question section or, or give us a call or email with um, some ideas for future webinars. Um, this session will be available for BPI uh, continuing ad credits um, if you're watching it live, but uh, be aware that if you're doing other things on your computer besides watching the webinar and, and uh, participating by a, a, asking questions, um, it, it will influence the amount of um, continuing ed credits that you get. So if you're checking email or working in, on other, uh, in other programs, um, somehow they know. <laughs> and uh, your credits are determined by BPI and um, like with other webinars you've watched, maybe um, you'll be credited soon after completion of the webinar by BPI. Um, so our agenda today, um, choosing a location for, for measuring um, duct pressure, and then we'll, we'll, in this webinar, we'll get into a little more details on, on why those locations um, are chosen. And same with um, a location for attaching to the duct work, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about why in, in some um, situations where, where you're attaching is problematic. We'll talk about some basic pressure concepts. Um, the ideas for this webinar um, are, are the result of some of the tech questions that we get at the Energy Conservatory. Um, some of those tech questions end up in, in, in pretty long conversations and, and some of those are the, the issues that we're gonna be covering today. Um, if, if you have a better uh, understanding of, of, of these um, pressure concepts, you'll be able to do uh, more of that troubleshooting when you're out in the field. If you're getting some funny numbers or you don't understand why you're getting these numbers or you're not trusting your numbers, um, there's some additional diagnostics that, um, that you can do. So, so hopefully some of these things that we'll be covering today will uh, you'll be able to apply as soon as you get out in the field and, and are getting some goofy numbers. Um, we're gonna we're gonna also go into some detail on, on duct leakage of the outside and, and issues that come up in uh, in some configurations, and um, and then we'll talk about about different ways you can you can set up to do the testing. Sometimes you maybe you only have one gauge or or. Uh, testing with two gauges, or we'll talk about some of the testing options and, and how you could do that. Um, we'll, we'll be using this, this house throughout the uh, presentation, and as you can see, it's got an attic uh, and a well-vented attic, 
and it has a crawl space, a well vented um, crawl space. And uh, we've got some supply ducts running through the attic space. And we've got our, our built in uh, outside supply duct leak here. So this is representing a, a leak leakage going into the attic. And then we've got an inside supply duct leak here. So this is representing air from the ductwork that's that's leaking to the inside of the house. And then we've got an outside return duct leak into the crawl space down here. That's represented by this, this opening here. And then of course, we've got our duct blaster and our blower door um, set up. So some of the terminology that that we'll be using that's, that's pretty common um, throughout the industry is this black box here is our, our furnace or our air conditioner or our air handler or our heat pump unit. This is our, our box that has the blower fan in it. Um, above that is our supply um, plenum. So the part coming right off the furnace is referred to as the plenum. And then this long section here we refer to as a trunk. And, and we've got branches coming off the trunk like a tree. And um, the, the opening right at the ceiling level is often referred to as a boot. And then we've got a supply, um, supply register over that boot that distributes the air. So that's some of the terminology we'll be using. And then on the return side, that's typically referred to as a return grill uh, rather than a register is pretty typical. So those are some of the terminologies we'll be using throughout the, uh, the webinar. Um, so choosing, choosing a location to measure uh, duct pressure, typically that's measured with a static pressure probe that came with your, your duct blaster system. So this is what our static pressure probe looks like. Um, it's got a magnet on it that helps you uh, attach it to ductwork. It's got a 90 degree turn so you can point it into the airflow. It's got a, a sealed end, like a bullet shaped end on it. So the air will come across these four, there's four holes in there for measuring static pressure. And you can think of static pressure as, as like the bursting pressure in the duct, like, um, like you'd be measuring pressure on a balloon or a, or a uh, tire. There, there's no air movement. It's just you're just measuring the outward pressure of the air in that. So that's what a static pressure probe does. Um, oftentimes we'll have people calling, they want a new static pressure probe and, and they'll refer to it as a pitot tube. Uh, a pitot tube is something different. Um, sometimes those terms are used interchangeably, but but you should get in the habit of calling this a static pressure probe and not a, not a pitot tube. Um, interesting, the, the, what they're calling this, what we're looking at here is a generic pitot static tube con, uh, configuration. So, so sometimes in, in some fields those, those terms are used interchangeably or this is a type of a pitot tube, um, a pitot static tube. But, but um, basically what a, what a pitot tube will do is it measures um, static pressure. So you can see where it's got the small, small holes on there. But it also measures total pressure. So that's pointed into the airflow. That's an open tube and the air is blowing into that. And the difference between static and total is velocity pressure. So a pitot tube is typically used to measure velocity pressure, which is converted to a velocity in feet per minute. And then you can calculate airflow based on that. But you can't use a static pressure probe to calculate airflow because you're not measuring total pressure. So that that's a, a fairly common question that we get is uh, people ask for if we sell pitot tubes and, and then we have to go in that long explanation. Um, so we can measure, so we're showing a static pressure probe uh, pointing into the airflow. We're pressurizing with the duct blaster in this case. Um, we're pointed into the airflow and uh, and we're measuring at the supply trunk line. So that's one of the um, three locations where you can measure it is, um, is in that supply trunk line. Um, another location is, is the supply, one of the supply registers. And the third location, if, if you're connecting at a central return, 
then then you can um, put the static pressure probe in the supply plenum. Um, pressure in the supply plenum isn't isn't real stable, but when you're attaching at that um, at that supply grill, um, it has a chance to to uh, straighten out a little bit as it goes through the ductwork and then goes through the uh, the uh, heat exchanger and the air conditioning coil. It has a chance to straighten out a bit, and and you can get a, a good representative number in the supply plenum if you're connected at a at a central return grill. Um, testing leaky ducts, um, and and we'll define leaky ducts as greater than 500 um, CFM. If you're testing duct tight ducts, which we would we would call less than 200 CFM, then you're going to be getting pretty stable readings at at representative readings, um, good representative readings at any of those three locations we just talked about. But um, when we're testing um, when we're testing leaky ducts. Um, we recommend that that you do two tests. That you do one test with the um, um, measuring pressure at the closest supply, and then move it to the supply that's farthest away, and, and take your next test there, and then average those two numbers. So that'll that'll give you a more representative numbers because if if you think about um, leaky supply ducts, the farther you get down the line, the more it's bleeding off air and and you can see a different pressure at, at the far end than you'd see at the near end. So that's why I recommend if you're testing leaky ducts um, to, to do your test that way. Um, a static probe is not necessary if you're measuring at a, at a supply register. Um, because there's really very little airflow there, and you're not worried about pointing that tip into the into the airflow, you can simply use a tube. So you can poke your tube through um, through at that location and measure directly with your tube without the static probe attached. Um, sometimes it, it, you'll run into situations where your DG700 is not in the house. You know, maybe maybe you're measuring. You've got a um, package unit sitting out in the yard, and and you're attaching your duct blaster fan right at where the air handler fan is, at the air handler cabinet. Um, maybe maybe you're set up in a garage, or maybe you're set up in an attic, doing the test. And um, if your DG700 is outside, then um, then you need to reference. The house, you need to run a, an additional tube to the house. So, what we're measuring, our duct pressure, we're always measuring the duct pressure with reference to the house. So, that's those are our common terms um, that are used either with respect to or with reference to. That's the top one with reference to the bottom one. Bottom ones are a reference tab. So, if you see, you know, you might see duct slash house um, or duct WRT with respect to house. That's what we're talking about is the top tap on the gauge with respect to the bottom tap on the gauge house or duct to house. So that's that's what we're talking about there. And with the with the B channel. Um, what we're measuring is the duct pressure, pressure at the flow sensor of the duct blaster fan, um, the fan pressure rather, the the um, pressure at the at the flow sensor of the duct blaster fan with reference to the space that flow sensor is in. That's what we need to do with the DG700. So, you, you know, if we're if we're in the same space as that flow sensor, we don't need a a uh, tube connected to that. But if we're depressurizing and we turn that fan around, now our flow sensor is inside the side with the, the inlet side of the fan with the rings on and the flow sensor. Now that's inside the flex duct and we need to run a tap from the reference to that T connection that's on, on that round transition piece. 
So um, those are some b basic pressure uh, um, information that's, uh, that's good to be aware of. So review, um, we can measure at the supply trunk line, a supply register, or the supply plenum, um, but only at the supply plenum if we're connecting into a central return. If the ducts are fairly tight, 200 CFM or less, um, any of those three locations will give us consistent readings. If ducts are, are leaky greater than 500, um, there, there may be large pressure differences. And if you're somewhere in between, you're kind of in a no man's land where, <laughs> where you'll have to make a judgment call on, on, um, on where, whether you think you, you need to do another test. And what you can do is, is with the duct blaster at 25, you can just check the pressure at the farthest supply register and the closest supply register and see if there's much of a difference, see if it warrants that, that second test and averaging the results. Um, so greater than uh, 500, we want to do two tests near and far register and, and average the results. Um, next, we'll be talking about uh, choosing a location to, to attach the ductwork. Um, we can attach it at a, at a return. Um, in a one, two, or three return system, um, any more than three returns, we, we, we probably want to go to measuring at the air handler. But um, but if we've got if we've got a one, two, or three return system, uh, the largest and closest one of the air handler is best. So so we're showing doing pressurization testing. We can if we're if we're doing pressurization testing. We don't need to use the flex duct. We don't need to attach a flow ring, and we can connect right to the to the um, return grill. Uh, if if we're um, it, and also you have the option. Sometimes it's easier to 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 uh, make that connection if we if we're using the flex duct. And here we're showing an open open ring. We don't have any rings on there. We're showing an open fan doing this test, um, and we're we're pressurizing we're pressurizing the system. Um, if we've got a small return, which is typical in northern climates, where they'll put a return in every bedroom and a couple in the living area, um, if you try attaching to that, that can be that can be problematic. So we're we're just showing a setup where we're attached to. A, a small 16 by 8 by 8 um, return grill and um, and and that we can see is problematic we've got we've got open fan and we're only able to get and this is CFM at 25 we're only able to get the system up to to 22 pascals um, so it's extrapolating whatever number we have up to up to 668 um, and we should be able to if if we're connected to to a to a large return, a central return, or the air handler, we should be able to get 1350 CFM. Um, well, actually, through because we're using the flex duct, we should still be able to get a thousand CFM through that system. But we're only able to get, um, you know, somewhere around 600. And and the reason for that is. Um, We've got a back pressure of 300 over 300 pascals. So by back pressure, with the second gauge I'm measuring, you can see this red tube going across. We're measuring the pressure um, at the end of that flex duct uh, um, right towards the almost in the register there. It, it'd be best if we can get a tube right into that into that duct work and measure it at that location. So we're measuring how much back pressure this the duct blaster fan is fighting against, and because we're blowing into such a small register, um, we're measure, we're only measuring 22 pascals at the supply register in this room. So that's where we're we're measuring our duct pressure of 22, but we're measuring 300 pascals of back pressure, and the duct blaster is only is calibrated to 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 work at. 100 pascals of back pressure. If we've got anything over 100 pascals, um, we don't. We're not getting an accurate reading. It's outside of the range of what the duct blaster can do. So, 
um, keep that in mind when you're doing tests. If you're if you're connecting at a location that's restricted, uh, make sure and check that back pressure, and that when you've got your ducts up to 25, that that back pressure is less than 100. Otherwise, you're not getting accurate readings. Um, we we can also connect uh, directly to the air handler cabinet. So um, in this case, we've taken the uh, the door off of the um, um, the cabinet where the where the blower fan is, and and we've connected right there. Um, sometimes we will, uh, and these this is happening more and more with with air handlers these days. Is is there'll be a board or, or something, some obstruction right in the way? So you're you've only got about two inches of space between the duct blaster fan and this big obstruction. And in cases like that, you're gonna have really high back pressures too. So you're gonna wanna, in cases like that, you're gonna need to build build out that, uh, um, that cabinet opening so, so you're able to get airflow around that obstruction. Otherwise, you're gonna have really high back pressures. So in that case, you would you would measure the the pressure in that um, in that air handler cabinet with reference to the room that you're in, and that back pressure again needs to be less than 100 pascals. Um, so a review of uh, locations where to where to connect up the ductwork. We'll want to do it at a central return, central grill rather, central um, return grill. If we've got a one, two, or three return system, connect at the largest grill closest to the duct blaster fan, um, closest to the to the um, um, air handler fan. Um, so we want to be at the largest grill and at the grill closest to the to the air handler fan, um, or we can connect right up the air handler in the blower cabinet, uh, right at the air handler itself. And if you suspect back pressure is over 100 pascals, then um, then you should measure it and uh, build out from the air handler uh, with cardboard if if you're seeing a high back pressure at that location. So in this section, we'll be talking about basic pressure concepts and how when you're doing a duct leakage test, the pressure in the ducts during that test can affect pressures in um, adjacent condition, unconditioned spaces. Um, one we're all familiar with is, is an exhaust fan, and an exhaust fan will, will depressurize a house. So it blows air out of the house, and um, depending on the size of the fan and the tightness of the house, um, air in has to equal air out. So if we're blowing air out of the house, uh, an equal amount of air will leak into the house almost instantaneously. And the tighter the house, um, the more that fan is going to put, uh, the higher the pressure that fan is going to put on the house in order to make up the air. Um, that it's blowing out of the house. So, so that's one, um, one basic pressure concept that, that we're all familiar with. Um, supply leaks to the outside can do the same thing. We're, we're blowing air um, through the air handler and it's coming out of the supply. If there's leaks to the attic, that'll act just um, very similar to an exhaust, how an exhaust fan would act. Um, if there's no um, duct leaks, then then all that air returns to the house and it doesn't change the pressure in the house. Unless we have doors closed or something on that order that can affect pressures. But um, no duct leaks, no change in, in pressure in the house. But supply leaks can act like an exhaust fan and, um, and will change the pressure in the house. When we're doing a, a total leakage pressurization test um, and we're blowing air into the ductwork, so now we've got all the register sealed, we've got the duct blaster fan um, attached, and we're blowing air into the ductwork. If, if we don't open a window, then, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to change the pressure in the house. 
And let's say we've got a two, 200 CFM of duct leakage and a 1500 CFM 50 house. That'll change the pressure in the house by about three pascals. So now our house is, is negative three caused by those duct leaks to the outside. And we've got our duct work. We're bringing our duct work to 25 pascals. Um, so now our house is at negative three and our duct work is at 25. So our, our duct work to the outside is really at 28 pascals. We're, we're 25 pascals with reference to the house, but now but the house is at negative three. So we're actually at 28, the ducts to the outside. So if we've got a well-vented attic um, and, and there's no pressure between the attic and the outside during the test, then then we're going to be we're going to actually be testing where where our duct leaks are in the attic. That's that's the important thing we need to keep in mind, and you'll you'll find that throughout the presentation that that in order to get accurate results, our, our goal is to have 25 pascals between the ducts and where the duct leaks are, where the ducts are leaking into. So, um, so in this case, uh, the solution is simple. We just need to uh, open a window and that relieves the pressure and, and, um, and we're gonna see uh, no pressure in the house now caused by, by that. Um, it's also important that, that crawl spaces and attics are open to the outside um, because we're going to be um, blowing air through those spaces. If they're well vented to the outside, we're not gonna cause any pressure in the attic or the crawl space by that air moving through that space because we've got air leaking from the ductwork to the attic and then to, from the attic to the outside. If the attic's well vented, it won't affect pressures in the attic. Same with the crawl space. If, if we don't, if it's not well vented, then um, during our duct leakage test, we're gonna change the pressure in the attic. The attic will become pressurized. And the same with the crawl space. If we've got air going through leaks in the crawl space, it will pressurize the crawl space and, and that will affect our readings. Um, our manual and, and other standards um, talk about opening vents, access panels, doors, um, in the unconditioned spaces containing ducts to the outside. Um, so we don't have this issue of, of pressurizing the space because if we pressurize the space, then our duct leaks aren't seeing that full 25 pascals of, of pressure. Um, they'll only be seeing um, 22 in the attic space in this case because we're at plus three, or 23 in the crawl space because we're at plus two in the crawl space. Um, so review of those um, basic pressure concepts. Um, Leaky ducts change pressures in the house, um, so we need to open a window during our test to get accurate results. Um, leaky ducts change pressures in unconditioned spaces, so those unconditioned spaces need to be open to the outside. Um, our most accurate results are gonna be when we have uh, 25 pascals between the duct and all of those unconditioned spaces. Um, Standards say that unconditioned spaces containing ducts shall be open to the outside. So um, although that's not always possible or practical, um, we're not saying bring a sawzall around and always make a hole to relieve that pressure. But if there are um, doors, <coughs> windows, access panels in those attics or crawl spaces that can be open to the outside vents, um, then we wanna do that. Um, in order to, to get repeatable numbers, you, you need to, at a minimum, understand how the house is set up and, uh, and document that. So if somebody else is coming back and, and um, doing a test after you, um, or if you're coming back for some reason to, to run that test again, you want to make sure the house is set up in the same way. And, um, um, you know, checking and confirming and 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 measuring pressures um, you should you should get the same pressure 
in between that space, that unconditioned space in the house, uh, if, if the house is set up the, the same way the next time and no changes have been uh, made to that house. So, you know, understanding these pressures in adjoining spaces um, will will help you understand and be able to troubleshoot problems. Um, we we get we get calls um, over and over again uh, from you in the field, uh, helping trouble helping them troubleshoot these problems. And um, without being at the house, it's not always easy to troubleshoot the houses. A lot of times we have, have you end up sending us pictures or so we can better understand the conditions if if you have the ability to do that. And um, a lot of times we can we can talk you through the basic setup and and uh, have you measure some pressures and and sort things out. But but hopefully um, you'll start doing some of this and and you'll be able to better understand um, the numbers you're getting. In this session, we'll be talking about duct leakage to outside concepts. Um, airflow requires both the driving force and a hole. In in the case of Duct leakage testing, the um, driving force is the difference in pressure. So we need both the difference in pressure and a hole in order to get airflow across that hole. If the pressure, if, if the um, house and the ducts are at the same pressure, then air will not flow through those leaks. So that's, that's the basic um, concept to keep in mind when we're doing duct leakage to outside testing. Uh, one of the issues that comes up periodically is is whether to tape or not tape the registers and grills during the duct leakage outside test. If if the entire duct system is not at exactly 25 pascals, you can get pretty large flows through open registers even with a small pressure difference. So, and, and we know that we don't get um, uh, especially with leaky ducts, we don't get even pe pressure distribution throughout the whole duct system. And if you've got, if you're, if you're near a large leak, it's likely to be at a different pressure than the rest of the duct system. So, um, so there are a number of reasons why why it is important to tape um, to tape the registers during that duct leakage test. Um, all of the blower door manufacturers' manuals um, in their test procedures say to tape, and and the standards um, like the the um, Resnet uh, Chapter Eight standard um, says that you are required to tape during uh, duct leakage outside test. Um, there are two methods being taught for measuring duct pressure during the duct leakage outside test, the duct to house pressure and the duct or, or the duct to outside pressure. Um, when we're measuring the house, the, the duct to house pressure, so this is the setup, we're showing the setup for the duct to house pressure. So our, our blower door reference, we're measuring house with reference to outside um, on our blower door gauge, and we're measuring the um, we're measuring the duct with reference to house uh, on channel A of our of our duct leakage gauge. So remember, like we we mentioned before, we've got duct is on the top, house is on the bottom, duct to house pressure. Um, we're in the house with the gauge, so we don't need to put a tube on there. You can put a tube on there if, you, if that makes you feel better. But <laughs> um, so we're reading duct to house, and um, and we need to put the gauge in pressure flow mode, not pressure flow at 25. And and the reason for that is we're bringing the duct to zero. Channel A is going to be reading zero. If we're set in the um, the pressure flow at 25 mode. We're going to be displaying low on channel B um, until we get the pressure up to about five or six pascals on, on uh, when we're doing a if we're at pressure flow at 25 or 10 pascals if we're 
um, at pressure flow at 50. So we're not going to see we're not going to see a pressure on here until our pressure gets high enough and we're shooting for zero. So we can't extrapolate zero to 25. Um, so we need to be in the pressure flow mode. If we're measuring um, the duct to outside pressure, the way you would do that is, is use a T connector and, and tap off of our, um, our tube going outside so we can we're measuring the same pressure at, uh, for both our duct and um, and our outside pressure for the um, duct leakage uh, pressure. So we're measuring duct with reference to outside and we're measuring house with reference to outside using the same tube going outside. And when we do this, we can we can go to the pressure flow at 25 mode because we're going to be seeing a pressure at 25, um, pressure at, at 25 on our on our duct pressure there. Um, so um, bringing the ducts to zero is the method that the duct blaster manual and quick guides um, talk about. It's the method. That's uh, that's talked about in the ResNet Chapter Eight standard, bringing the ducts to zero, and the reason we recommend that is because the duct pressure and the house pressure are going to be much more stable than an outdoor reference, especially if there's any amount of wind at all. So, so we're going to get a more stable reading, and the goal of the test is to get zero pressure between the house and the duct, and the closer we can get to that the more accurate we're going to be able to read um, to get a reading of zero. And um, if, however, if you're using a, a type of gauge that has trouble reading zero, even with without tubing connected to it, you're probably going to be better off going to 25. Uh, you'll probably get a more accurate reading that way than, than trying to go to zero. Um, if you have really leaky ducts, it's possible that you won't be able to reach zero. Um, you've got the, the uh, duct blaster fan cranked and you can't reach zero. Um, in those cases, one of the options is, is to pressurize um, without the flex duct. Um, without the flex duct, you'll get more flow. And when you pressurize, you'll get more. You have more potential for flow because it doesn't require a ring. Whenever you're depressurizing, um, you need to have a flow ring on to get an accurate reading. But with pressurization, you don't need to. Um, so with a with a ring on, obviously your your maximum flow is going to be less. So that's that's a way where you're you're able to get uh, more flow. you you should if you've got a low back pressure across that opening. Um, without the flex, you'll be able to get up to about 1,350 CFM of flow. So that, you should be able to reach zero at that point, or you've really got leaky ducts, or disconnected ducts, or you've got, you've got some major, major issues. Um, so if you can't reach zero, uh, even at that point, what you need to do is, is lower your house pressure. So instead of shooting for 25, you'll have to shoot for 20 or 15 or however low you need to drop it in order to get the ducts to zero. There's no way to extrapolate numbers any other way. So you need to, you need to lower the house pressure. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, lower the house pressure and then um, get the ducts to zero. And then you'll need to apply a can't reach pressure factor. So if you're at 15 or 20 you'll apply the can't reach pressure factor at, at that pressure. And um, this can't reach pressure factor chart is in our manual in a number of different locations. This one happens to be in chapter six under con, um, conducting a total leakage pressurization test. And um, so it's it's got listed from a duct pressure of 25 all the way down to five, what the can't reach pressure factors are. So if you're, you're able to get it the house to 20 and the ducks to zero, then um, you'll apply that K 
carriage pressure factor of 1.14. And another way to do it is, is to use the formula. That's how these numbers are derived. Um, you take 25 divided by what your current test pressure is, and the results of that, you raise it to the 0.6 po uh, power, 0.60 power, and, um, and you can get your carriage pressure factor that way. Um, if you have one unconditioned space containing most of the ductwork, in, in this case, um, uh, we've got minimal attic venting, and most of the ducts aren't seeing 25 pascals of pressure. So our house to outside is at 25, our ducts to house is at zero, but our duct to attic pressure is only 15. So it's not seeing, we want that, that duct to, uh, to attic space to be at a full 25 uh, because we're, we're, we're trying to test those for, for how much leakage there is at 25 pascals of pressure. Um, so an option, if you've got that, that situation where you've got one unconditioned space that contains most of the ducts and, and um, your, your um, uh, house to attic pressure isn't 25, then we can move that blower door tube to the attic. And now our, our, we're measuring on channel A house to attic pressure. And if our house to attic is at 25 and our ducts are at the same pressure, ducts and house are equal, then, then um, we can put a D in here and they're gonna be equal because D and, and H are equal. And our ducts to attic pressure is going to be 25 Pascal. So we'll have 25 Pascals of pressure across these leaks which is really, the, to get a most accurate reading, that's what we're trying to measure. So all the duct leaks in that space are now seeing 25 pascals of pressure. If we have two unconditioned spaces containing most of the ducts, um, and we have minimal attic and minimal crawl space venting, again, most of the ducts aren't seeing 25, but the crawl space and attic are not at the same pressure. So we're seeing, <clears throat> we're seeing 15 pascals across the leaks um, in the attic, and we're seeing 20 pascals across the leaks in the crawl space. Neither are seeing 25 pascals of pressure like, like we want to see. Um, and that's kind of beyond the scope of what, what, what um, what we're going to talk about and beyond the scope of what most people would be willing to do, but it is possible to put an extra fan in the crawl space, get the crawl space up to the same pressure as the attic, and do this test the same way we just talked about here, and you would get you would get uh, all of those ducts at at 25 pascals of pressure difference. Um, we, we get this call every once in a while, um, um, multiple times a year for sure. And both Peter and I will get, will get these calls, uh, multiple times a year, um, because y you've done a good job out there of, of convincing builders to do condition crawls instead of vented crawls. Um, and it, and if you've got a, package unit where the, the unit is sitting out in the yard or the air handler is not in the conditioned space, then then you've got some duct leakage outside and, and you need to do that duct leakage outside test. And, um, and oftentimes if there's no access to the house from that crawl space into the house, then the crawl space is not seeing 25 pascals of pressure. So some of the leaks um, into the crawl space end up being included as duct leaks to the outside because we've got our house at 25 with respect to the outside, the ducts are at that same pressure, and the crawl space outside is only at 20. So we're seeing leaks from the higher pressure to low. Air, air will travel from high pressure to low pressure so we're seeing some of those duct leaks show up as duct leaks to the outside, even though they're leaking into conditioned space. So the solution to that problem 
requires a third fan um, where now you you bring the uh, crawl space up the same pressure as the house so you do that just like you did with the duct leakage test where where you're bringing this to 25 instead of referencing crawl space to outside you reference it to the house and cruise zero so you're getting the house at the same pressure you want the house at the same pressure as the crawl space and the house at the same pressure as the ducts yeah, and now you'll get an accurate um, you'll get accurate readings so to review our um, duct leakage outside concepts to tape or not to tape it's our opinion you should always tape um, duct to house duct outside you can do the test um, either way but we recommend measuring duct to house and cruising zero um, if you can't reach zero with the duct blaster fan or you can't reach 25 with the blower door then you need to drop that pressure down and use the can't reach pressure factors if you have one condition space containing most of the ducts and those ducts aren't seeing the full 25 then you're best measuring that unconditioned space with reference to the house instead of referencing outside with your blower door and doing the test that way if you're doing a condition crawl without an access panel to to the house between the house and the crawl crawl space and um, and the crawl space and house aren't at the same pressure then that requires a third fan to get an accurate test um, if you have pressures in unconditioned uh, um, basic concept um, pressures in an unconditioned space can be changed during the test and this will affect your readings and another concept if unconditioned crawl space and attic are not well connected to the outside then it will affect your readings in this section we're going to be talking about um, some ways that you may not been aware of that you could do a duct leakage test to the outside um, you can do the test with one gauge with one DG 700 um, occasionally we'll have people who will buy a blower door and a duct blaster system and to save some money on that initial purchase they'll they'll just get one DG 700 so there is a way to do the test with only one gauge so we'll go through that first um, we're gonna run the blower door test first so we'll run a tube outside and um, we don't we can just leave the gauge in pressure pressure mode because we're only we're not interested in the flow through the blower door at this point you know we can just leave it in the pressure pressure mode without changing the mode so just leave leave the gauge as it is when you turn it on and bring the house up to 25 once the house is at 25 we'll disconnect the tubing and we'll go over to the duct blaster and connect the tubing for the duct blaster and now you notice that the the pressure we're pressurizing the duct work and our initial duct pressure is a negative number in this case we're at negative 2.3 and um, and then as we turn up the duct blaster fan and we're blowing air into the duct work that number will start moving towards zero so then we'll bring the ducts to zero um, we'll disconnect the duct blaster tubing reconnect our blower door tubing and now we can see the the duct leaks to the outside have changed the pressure in the house and we'll want to back off that uh, that flow and adjust it back to 25 pascals then disconnect the blower door tubing go back to the duct blaster fan it's getting a little repetitious huh? <laughs> we'll reconnect our duct blaster tubing and we'll adjust that back to zero so there's a little bit of back and forth and uh, if if um, your blower door is upstairs and your duct blaster is in the basement um, you're going to get a, a workout going up and down the stairs but there is a way to do it so if you've only got one gauge or or maybe you're sending your you've got two gauges and you're sending one back for calibration um, there is a way to do the test now you know there is a way to do the test with one DG 700 um, the process is certainly much easier if you've got two DG 700s um, you'll set the first gauge to cruise 25 so as the duct blaster is turned on and changes the pressure in the house your 
um, your gauge will will uh, ramp it down and and keep you at 25 pascals. And then um, with the deck blaster gauge, you'll bring the uh, bring the pressure to zero. So you'll you'll um, increase the fan speed uh, until you get to zero. And and that's it. Then you'll document the test and um, and you're done. Um, this time of year in in the North Country, especially, it, it's handy to have the Wi-Fi link, so you can use two DG seven hundreds uh, uh, plus the Wi-Fi link, and um, that will allow you to to cruise uh, the blower door using the um, the app on an iPhone or an iPad or an Android phone. Um, or a computer as far as that goes. You could you could use a PC computer to do it also. And the advantage to that is is you can, um, when we have below zero weather, <laughs> you don't have to, to blow air, that cold air into the house for as long a period of time. You can, you can set the blower door to cruise zero from the room where you're set up with the duck blaster fan and as soon as you start cruising the blower door at at uh, 25 you can start adjusting the duck blaster fan to get to zero so so as soon as you see 25 pascals on on the blower door um, you'll already have the ducts to zero and then you can um, document your your uh, pressures and flows and and shut the shut the fan off right away so it it helps uh, especially during extreme uh, winter climates in the north and extreme um, summer climates in the south to be able to run that blower door for the least amount of time possible. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to bring up before we start talking about uh, um, answering questions, answering the questions you have. Our zone dampers. We'll get calls once in a while where where people have zone dampers, and um, maybe there's not power to the system, and they don't know if the damper is open or closed, and and are looking for a way to confirm that. It, it's pretty straightforward. You're just measuring the pressure across the zone damper, and a little bit more background information. What is a zone damper? Um, we're talking about electronic zone dampers um, that are, are typically used to one side, you know, in this case where this is set up, one side might serve the living area, living room, dining room, kitchen, and the other side might serve the bedroom area if, if uh, the house is set up that way. Or maybe it's the first floor and the second floor, or, or maybe you'll have a first floor, second floor basement kind of configuration where you have three zone dampers. Um, but um, you know, whichever side you have a zone damper in, you'll will be um, will be a separate section of ductwork, obviously, and you have a thermostat that will control um, control the um, both the turn the the uh, furnace on and will will open or close the zone damper. So the default position is typically open. So when there's uh, no call for heat the zone dampers will be open. When there's a call for heat, it'll close off the area where there's no call for heat and just blow area, blow air in the area that's, that's needed. So what you can do is um, measure the pressure on one side of the zone damper, and, and maybe that is just uh, measuring the pressure in the, in the plenum, um, and then turn your duct blaster on and, and get that um, get that pressure up to 25 and then measure w where you know you're on the other side of the damper and, and that might be at a supply register served by that trunk line. So, um, and you should be reading zero. You should have no pressure across that. If you're reading 25, then you know that zone damper is, is tightly sealed and, and needs to be open. So that's just a quick test. Um, measure the pressure across the zone damper and that pressure should be zero. Well thanks for attending our webinar today. Um, if you have any questions uh, feel free to type them in. 
and we're gonna have a little delay here you may experience a delay um, while we're we're waiting for um, for everybody who's, who's streaming this video to uh, to catch up and uh, feel free to call us at any time call our main number if you've got uh, any tech support questions and um, feel free to share this webinar with others um, and as always we appreciate any input on what you'd like to see for future webinars okay we're back live um, thanks for attending our webinar um, we had a lot of great questions uh, we certainly uh, didn't get to them all but we'll we'll take as much time as we need here to uh, to go over those questions um, the ones that um, that don't get answered um, we, we will make sure and get answers to everybody's questions by email we have your email addresses so we can answer your individual questions by email so that will be taken care of um, sorry about that hiccup in the middle where we we jumped ahead 10 minutes and then went back and replayed some stuff but uh, what fun would it be to attend a webinar if everything went perfect right um, there were a lot of questions up front about static pressure probe and um, and using that or or not using that um, so um, I think we got to, to most of those but basically um, you you want to you can use the static pressure probe um, or you can use just a tube a straight tube or you can use um, uh, just the tube without any probe on the end of it if you're connected at a supply register um, there's so little airflow at that location that that airflow won't affect your measurement um, that's why you, you can use a, a straight tube a, um, a static pressure probe it is dependent on, on uh, the direction of the flow but the, if there's very little flow the direction it's pointing isn't isn't a big issue um, advanced duct testing is a is a very broad topic and I'm not sure what what everybody expected this webinar to be but but please give us feedback if we didn't cover the, the topics that you wanted covered um, because we we will certainly be doing additional webinars on this topic um, we, we had a lot of attendees today and, and a lot of questions so um, so we plan on, on doing more of these in the future but please give us uh, feedback on if we didn't cover um, the areas of duct testing that you would like and, and we can get around to that um, one other question that we had was was measuring back pressure so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna see if I can't let's see But maybe I could uh, skip back in the PowerPoint, but it looks like I can't. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, um, I'll I'll uh, get back to the area. And, uh, oh boy. This is different than how I'm used to looking at it. Um, yeah, this isn't very helpful. Um, let me see if I can go back to that area where uh, where we were measuring uh, back pressure. Um, let's see. That pressure is forward here a little bit. Um, basically, I, I'm I'm gonna <laughs> save us all some trouble here and 
and um, just skip over that question a little bit. But back, when you're measuring back pressure, you're measuring the, the pressure across the location where you're connected to a duct. So you, right where the um, the um, duct blaster fan is, is connected to the duct system, you're measuring the pressure right at that location. When you're measuring duct pressure, you're measuring pressure um, at a supply register or a supply plenum or a supply grill. But, but when you're measuring back pressure, you're measuring the pressure right across your fan connection, right at that location. And that pressure should be less than 100 pascals. In that example I used, we're, we're, we're connecting up, we were connecting up to a small 8 by 16 register and uh, it, it, it's trying to blow air in there and um, it's reducing the total flow of the fan because the back pressure is so high. Yeah, and we're also changing the calibration on the fan because there's so much back pressure. So, um, so I hope that answers that question. Um, let me um, go up and we'll, we'll go through um, we'll go through some of the other questions that we had here. Um, there, there, another another issue we we had a lot of questions about um, was using the aero seal uh, plugs or, or um, somehow using a plug at the register, and, and that's certainly a, a, an acceptable application when when you're testing um, during construction because there's not um, many other good ways to, to handle that. Um, you know, the, the tape isn't going to stick very well to the, um, to the plywood floor. Um, and and um, so, so that's an acceptable method. And, but there is certainly an issue with you're not taking into consideration the leakage around the duct when you're doing that. So, so you're not necessarily getting a getting an accurate measurement. We don't go into a lot of detail in our manual with that issue. Uh, we do talk about, you know, if you're using deck mass register sealing tape and you tape onto the wall, you might have problems peeling paint off or, or something on that order. So we recommend not, not taping to the wall for that reason. But, um, but you want to, you want to be consistent in how you're doing it. Uh, consistent across your company and, and consistent with uh, if you're a HERS rater with, with your HERS provider on, on what they recommend on that topic. I've got something on the Euro Seal. Um, this is Pete Burns. Yeah, this is Pete Burns. Um, I was at a, a trade show and saw the guys next to us with, with it and it's it, they sell it in sheets and it actually has a grid mark so you can cut it out and keep it, um, there we go, uh, too close, there we go. Uh, it, has, it has a grid mark on it. We're getting technical direction here. It, uh, it has a grid mark so you can cut it out and um, to, to the size that you want. And it's it's not quite as soft as like a seat cushion foam. It's a little bit harder. It's really hard to describe, but it's it's got a little bit of a little little bit of give to it. Um, and I, I thought it would work great for this. And uh, I talked to a uh, Aeroseal guy and he thought it would work pretty good too. But I've I've heard it um, it is expensive, but I don't know what the cost is. Okay, um, and then that you know the the uh, tape to the wall or tape to the um, register is is always an ongoing question and and um, just because we say it's okay doesn't mean it's okay. <laughs> it's it's our opinion and the same with with uh, you know we had some other questions um, also throughout the webinar about um, about standards and. And what we recommend, and um, you know, all of those things we were talking about today is is what's in our our manual, and, and that's the manufacturer's recommended way to do a test. And um, some some uh, programs just say refer to the manufacturer's recommendations for for how to do a test, and others are specific, like the resonance standard is specific on, on how to perform a test. And if you're doing something outside of that. Then, then you should be talking to your, um, your provider to make sure that, that that's okay. You know, when there's a conflict, you need to go with uh, the program you're working for and what their protocol is. Um, let's see if I can look at what some of our other questions here are. Um, 
we had a lot of questions. I'm going to kind of skip down a little bit farther where we maybe I'll just go to the end and see some more questions we, uh, we didn't get to yet. Okay. Let's see, another question about back pressure. Um, when uh, I'm measuring duct leakage to the outside, should a door from garage to house, from garage to outside, be open when pressurizing the house at 25? This is assuming that the primary area for leakage is the ductwork in the floor over a garage? That's a good question. Um, we recommend, and, and the resident standard does also, that that if if there's an unconditioned space uh, containing ductwork, you, you should open it to the outside as much as you can. So in this case, that would, that would be yes. You know, if you have a, a, a access into a crawl space and it's a vented Vented crawl space, and there's a there's a hatch going from the outside. You should open that hatch. If if there's a window in an attic that's easily accessible, um, you sh you should open that window. Um, that that's our recommendation because really you're you're trying to test do that test. The, the the idea, the whole concept of the test is to do the test so there's 25 pascals across where the leaks are, and um, and to get at that those spaces should be open to the outside. And if you're not opening them to the outside, um, then, then you should document the, the condition of the house. If you don't document the condition of the house, you're not going to have a repeatable test. So um, you need to be aware of how the house is set up, and, um, and you should be documenting that. Otherwise, your test is not repeatable. If, um, People have vents to the crawl space open at certain times of the year and closed to others. And, and you know, uh, how are they when you do the test? If you want to repeat the test, that's, that's an important consideration. Yeah. Um, let's see. We've got some of these other questions. Um, does one get uh, the most accurate CFM when the duct blaster is attached to the air handler itself versus a small, smaller dimension return duct. Um, earlier on, we did mention that if you have a one, two, or three um, return system, you can attach at the largest register closest to the air handler. Um, so that's you, you can kind of use that as a rule of thumb. Um, if, if, you, if you're going to connect at, at one that's not the biggest one, or if the biggest one is not real big, um, and, and you think it's going to create a restriction, then measure that back pressure. As long as that back pressure, uh, pressure across where you're making that connection is less than 100 pascals, then, then you're going to get an accurate number. Um, if, if that number is close to 100 pascals, you're, you're going to get less total flow when you've got the fan cranked, it's not going to move as much air because you're fighting, you're fighting against that back pressure. Um, but, but you'll still get an accurate reading. It doesn't affect the accuracy. If, if the uh, back pressure is less than 100, um, the accuracy isn't affected, but the total flow you're able to get may, may be lower. Okay, I think I think that um, I think we'll conclude there. There are certainly um, lots and lots of questions here, but I think in the in the interest of time, um, we'll we'll respond to all of those. In, any of your questions that that uh, you typed into us, we will answer those uh, by email, and and please give us some feedback on um, on additional duct leakage topics you'd like us to cover or um, or just um, or just general topics, additional general topics you'd like us to cover. Um, also, this is Kim. Yep, this is Kim. Um, if you have other questions or maybe your question wasn't answered here, you know, like Paul said, we can email you, but also um, 
Before the webinar started, you may have noticed a link to our online user forum. Um, so you can definitely go to the online user forum, which is on the support page of our website, create an account, and then you can post your questions in there under the Suck Blaster topic. And then you can have a conversation with anybody else who's on there. And of course, all of us are monitoring that and will respond on there as well. So you can always ask questions on there as you think of them. Um, and if you do have webinar topic suggestions, I can easily create that category in there so people can type in their webinar suggestions as well. Okay. So our next, um, our next upcoming webinars are listed on our website. Um, we're going to be doing um, one on, on code compliance, one on accuracy, uh, one on, on um, it's labeled residential voter testing, but I think that one's we're gonna we're gonna focus that one just on single family voter testing. Our next webinar will be um, February 20th. It's a Friday. That's going to be a joint webinar with Rick Card of uh, Residential Energy Dynamics. Um, he's going to be doing uh, zone pressure diagnostics. We will be hosting that webinar, and that webinar is listed. Um, on our website if you go to events or upcoming webinars and you can register for that. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, thanks for attending.